In this session, we'll explore the concept of pasting surfaces together. On my screen, I've got a drawing that represents a proposed road center line in the area of an existing bridge. Let's zoom in and we'll do a quick tour. My center line alignment is called Randall Road. I also have a pair of surfaces. I've got an existing ground surface called EG. I also have a surface that represents my existing bridge. This is called EG Bridge. Just for a second, I'm going to select both of these surfaces and I'll come up and launch the object viewer. And I'll orbit this around. We'll zoom in and get an idea of what that looks like. Let's close the object viewer. I'll press escape. Next, we'll pan down and take a look at the profile. Down here, I have pulled a surface profile for the existing ground surface. Here is the profile for the existing bridge. And then this is my finished grade profile for the center line of Randall Road. Finally, we'll take a look at the labels in my profile view. The label on the left represents the existing road center line elevation, and then the label on the right represents the proposed road center line elevation. The issue that I'm having is that the existing labels are based on this EG surface. And the problem is when I get into the bridge area, you can see the elevations drop down approximately 15, 20 feet because we're in the lowering there under the bridge, and then the labels pop back up to the road center line elevation here on the other side. I would like all of my existing labels to represent the existing road center line elevation. So I need them to jump from this surface to this surface back to the other surface. The way I'll do that is by creating a composite surface. I'm going to paste these surfaces together. Let's take a look. We'll start by creating a new surface. I'll do that by coming up to the Create Ground Data panel. I'll choose Create Surface. I'm going to call this surface Composite, and then I will give it a style. We'll give it one that shows up well on screen. Let me open the menu and I'm going to select Contours and Triangles. Let me click OK and OK. So I have my new surface. There's no data in it just yet. Let's go over to the Prospector tab. I'll open the Surfaces category and then we'll expand the Composite Surface. I'll expand Definition and then I'm going to come down to Edits. I'll right click and I'll choose Paste Surface. I will then select the existing ground surface first. Let me click OK. That triangulation was now pasted into my composite surface. So at this point, there is no difference between the composite and the existing ground. Let's go back to edits. I'll right click and I'll choose paste surface. I'm going to paste in the bridge this time and I'll click OK. Now that I'm finished, I'll go ahead and select this overall surface and I'll choose object viewer. Let's orbit this up. We'll zoom in and take a look. As you can see, this surface will be perfect for generating my centerline road elevation labels. It's not so great out here towards the edges, but that's all right. I only need it for the center line. Let me close this. I'll press escape. Let me also mention that when you paste surfaces together, the last surface that you paste in wins. So the order is important. That being said, if you do paste the surfaces in the wrong order, here's how you can fix it. I'm going to select the surface and I'll go to surface properties. Here on the Definition tab, we can see the Paste order right here. If I pasted these out of order, I could always select my desired surface and then use these arrows to push it up or down. Let's click Cancel. I'll press Escape to deselect. At this point, I'm going to hide my composite surface. I don't need to see it on screen. I'll do that by selecting it. I'll come over to the Properties palette, and I'm going to change its style to No Display. Now, the nice thing about the pasted surface is that if my existing ground or my bridge surface were to change, that composite surface will update also. So it's always going to be a dynamic relationship. I don't have to worry about the data being out of sync. Next, let's sample that new surface. I'll do that by selecting my alignment. I'll come up and choose Surface Profile. I'd like to sample that composite surface. I'll click Add, and then I'll click OK. Here the panorama is telling me that the profile was created. Let me go ahead and close that. And if I come down to my profile now, it's a little hard to see here, but let me hover. Right here is that new composite surface profile. That's exactly what I want. Now, I don't need to see this object either. To hide the display, I'm going to select the profile view. I'll come up to profile view properties. And then here on the profiles tab, I'll come down to that composite surface and I'll choose not to draw it. Let's click OK. Finally, to adjust these labels, let's zoom in. I can select the labels. We can go back to profile view properties. I can choose the Bands tab, and let me slide over. Right here we can see Profile 1 and Profile 2. That represents the label on the left and the one on the right. As you can see, the one on the right is labeling the finished ground profile elevation. I want the one on the left to label the composite centerline elevation. Let's click OK. At this point, my labels are now consistent with the roadway. 
all the way through the bridge area. And once again, if either of those surfaces change, these profiles will update as well as the labels. Now that I'm finished, I'll do a zoom extents to center the drawing on screen. As you can see, surface pasting can be very helpful when it comes to profile labeling. That being said, there are many times when pasted surfaces come in handy. Try using this technique to create a single set of contours from multiple surface models. Pasted surfaces can make it easier to calculate earthwork because you can consolidate several proposed surfaces into a single overall surface. Likewise, pasted surfaces are perfect for creating corridor daylight targets that span multiple surfaces. When it comes down to it, you are only limited by your creativity. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.